Hi, good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Sharif Gamal, and this is uh, a new video about reinforced concrete design. Uh, it is design of reinforced concrete beams, part three. In part number one, we went through introduction and all the checks required to do for designing of reinforced concrete beams. In part two, we went through a solid example of simply supported uh, reinforced concrete beam. In this part, part three, we will take a second solved example of continuous beam. Okay, so in this example, we have the plan shown here. It consists of nine slabs supported on beams and columns, and it is required to design B1. And when I refer to B1, it means the whole B1 here that includes three spans of five meters each. So it is a continuous beam of uh, three spans and five meter in each span. Okay, let's read uh, this example together and see what is required. So beam B1 is 300 millimeter wide by 660 millimeter depth. Okay, so the dimensions here are given in the problem. You don't need to go to the initial proportion step to calculate the dimensions because it's already given to you. So no need in this case to uh, start this from scratch. You have to follow what is given to you with three equal spans of five meters, as you can see here, one, two, three span. Uh, the beams are four meters center to center, so the distance between beams here are four meter each, uh, with a 180 millimeter thick slab, the thickness of the slab is 180 millimeter. Live load on the beam is given as 50 kilonewton per meter, okay. And the dead load, including self weight, is 85 kilonewton per meter. So in this example, the load on the beam is directly given to you. <clears throat> you don't need to calculate any load from the slabs. Okay. And this example is not similar to the previous one. In the previous one, we transferred the load from the slab to the beam. In this example here, the loads as kilonewton per meter as a uniform load is given directly to you on the beam. So it is 50 kilonewton per meter as a live load. And the dead load, including the self weight, equals 85 kilonewton per meter. And nothing is given here about wall loads, so we can assume there is no wall load. So loads are given. If is 30, if yield is 250 for the shear reinforcement, 460 for the uh, main reinforcement, mild exposure, one hour fire resistance, column 300 by 300, and required to design the beam. And as a note here, don't check deflection. So they did not ask here for a checking deflection. So no need to go through checking deflection. We already went to through this check in previous video part number two. Okay, so let's conclude all what is given here. B web is 300, H is 660, HF is 150, the span is five meters. Live load is 50 kilonewton per meter. Dead load is 85 kilonewton per meter. FCU 30 megapascal, FP yield 460 and 250 for the shear reinforcement, mild exposure and one hour fire resistance, and columns are 300 by 300, and we need to design beam B1. Let's start our design. For the initial proportioning, dimensions are already given, okay? So we, we don't need to get dimensions because they are there. We know that the dimensions here, B web is 300, H is 660, HF is 150. So what do we need from the initial proportion? We need only to get the depth. We need to know how much is the D, okay, from the top until the middle of the tension is T. Okay, we need to get the D. So H is given, B is given HF. Let's get the D. To get the D, we have to get the cover. So from table 3.3, mild exposure with C30, we know that the nominal cover will be 25, and this is here, mild exposure, C30, the cover is 25 millimeter. Then we have to check for fire, fire 3.4, and one hour fire resistance with beams, continuous or simply supported, they are the same, and this 20 millimeter. So here, this 20 millimeter, we take the larger from the two values, so the cover will be 25. We assume 20 millimeter diameter for the bars, 10 millimeter diameter for the length, so we can calculate the D. D in this case equals the total H 
minus cover minus phi over two of the bar minus phi of the link. So h minus cover minus phi link minus phi over two for the bar. So it will give us a value of 615 millimeter. So the depth is 615 millimeter. This is what we need for the initial proportioning because already dimensions are given to us. Now we can continue for final proportioning and as usual, we have to start by calculating load. Load here on the beam is already given to us as a total live load and a total dead load, including the self-weight. Everything is given as kilonewton per meter. So design ultimate load, all the loads are given as service load. So the ultimate load, we get W ultimate equals 1.4 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So it is a total load of 199 kilonewton per meter. So this is the total load on the beam per meter length, 199 kilonewton per meter uniform load. So we have to go to the second step, which is the structure analysis to find the bending moment and shear force uh, diagram or shear force values. So we have some conditions here are satisfied since the spans are equal, yes, the difference is less than 15%. Actually, they are exactly equal in this problem. Then we have the dead load here is greater than the live load. So again, live load is less than the dead load. The third condition is the load is uniform distributed load. So all the three conditions are satisfied. So in this case, we can use table 3.5 to find the bending moment and shear force values. Okay, table 3.5. Okay. So to use table 3.5, we have to get the ultimate load on the span as a resultant. So the capital F here equals W ultimate times L. W ultimate, kilonewton per meter times the span equals five. So it is 995 kilonewton and from this table 3.5 we have the values of bending moment zero at the first support 0 0.09 fl 0.11 fl negative then positive negative and positive and zero at the end again and these are the shear force 0 0.45 0 0.6 0 0.55 and so on let's apply or substitute the values here f is 995 L is five meters and use these values. So from doing that, we'll be able to draw the bending moment diagram. Okay, you have a maximum negative values here. They are the same because this is a symmetric beam. And you have a positive moment at the first span and the last span, they are the same because we use this coefficient 0.09 FL. At the middle one, it is still it's somehow uh, less than the first spans because it is 0.07 FL instead of 0.09 FL in the first span. So these are the values of the bending moment, okay? Then also we use the values here to get the shear and this will be the shear force diagram. And at the beginning here, it is 0.45F, then 0.6 and 0.55 and so on. So we have the bending moment diagram with the values of the maximum moment, shear force with the values of maximum shear. Next step is to make our design. To make the design for the Longitudinal reinforcement, you have to check for, okay, positive moment, you have this section, the first span and the last span, they are the same, okay? Then middle one will be another uh, mid span. The mid span, as you know, all the sections as the mid span, the flange is under compression. So in this case, this section, this section, this section will be designed as flanged section. Above the support here, section B and section C, they are the same, so it will be designed only one, one time. And because the flange is under tension, so in this case, it will be designed as rectangular section. Then for the shear, we are going to design for all of these values. I will go through one or two of them with more details. For the rest, the video including them, but we will not spend too much time not to, uh, to make the video very long, okay, because it's just repetition. But at different values. Okay, so let's start. For the reinforcement, this is I mean longitudinal reinforcement, we have span AB and span CD. This span AB and span CD, we have the same positive moment, maximum positive moment is 447.8 and as I told you, this will be a flanged section. 
Okay, for flange section, we have to start by calculating the flange width, the B flange. B flange from this hose here, it is B web plus LZ over five, because this is a T section, okay? B web plus LZ divided by uh, five. So LZ in this case, because it is continuous, so it is 0.7 times 500, 0.7 times L. Okay, this is 0.7 times L because this is continuous. Okay, we substituted by B web, LZ 0.7 times L divided by five. This will give us a flange width, B flange of 1,000 millimeter. It means one meter. Okay, once we have this, we start calculating the K equals M ultimate divided by FCU B flange D squared. Don't forget here to use B flange because this is a flange section. Of course, the value here will be very small less than 0.156, it means this is a singular reinforced section. We don't need a compression steel. Calculate Z over D using the famous equation, and it is 0.95, it means okay, within the limit, so we use it as it is. Calculate Z, and then calculate area steel required equals M divided by 0.95 F field times Z. The Z is here, F field is 460. M is the moment that we have it, 447. Don't forget to multiply by 10 to the power 6. So it will give us a required reinforcement, 1754 millimeter square. We have to use now, choose the diameter and choose the number of the bars. Here we choose 4T25 as bottom reinforcement. A is provided is 1960. It should be higher than or greater than the AS required. This is the AS provided for T25, okay? So here for the first span and for the last span, we are going to use 4T25. Here I divided them into two bars. Or two, two bars are long and two bars are short. We uh, cut half of the bars, 50%, and half of the bar were long. We can put them in one layer. Yes, it depends on the spacing. Maybe they will be in one layer, but I put them here, here like one above the other just to show you that we have two different types of bars, one long and one short. Later on, we'll see the sections and we'll see how to put these bars into uh, a real section. This is only for to show you that we have four bars here, four bars here. At the top also, let's get the hangers because even if you don't need top reinforcement here because it is under compression, but we need to use some hangers. For hangers, we use 20% of the bottom steel as hangers, so 20% of AS provided will be 392. So we use 2T16, about 400 millimeter square, a little bit higher than this, which is okay. So here at the top, we use T2, T16, 2, T16. So we designed for the span here, we designed for the span here, okay? Let's move to a second point, okay? And this is showing the reinforcement. The reinforcement here, I have four bars. We put them in one layer because the width was enough. You have 300 millimeter. If you check the spacing between bars, you will find that it is greater than 25 millimeter, which is okay. It means this is acceptable. I can put them in one layer. No need to put them into two layers. Now let's go to the second span. This is band BC. And again, we'll design for the positive moment. Positive moment. 348.3, again, it is a flanged section because the tension is down and the flange is under compression. We design as a flanged section. We have to calculate the width of the flange. It would be similar to the previous one because they are exactly the same. Calculate for K, again, it is less than 0.156, single reinforced section, calculate Z over D. It is now 0.96, which is greater than 0.95. If it is greater than 0.95, the code is saying the maximum Z should be 0.95, so we calculate the Z using the maximum value, 0.95 times D, it is 584.3, then calculate AS required M over 0.95 FPL times Z, it will require an area of 1,300, which is less than the previous area here, because the moment here in BC is less than the moment in AB, because this is a first span, this is an interior span, the coefficient here is 0.07 FPL, here it is 0.09 FL. So this is AS required. Now we'll use 3T25 and instead of 4T25 at the first span and AS provided. And let's also get the, this is the bottom steel here, 3T25. And for the top, 
hunger bars, 20% we again used 2T16 similar to the first span. And okay, this will be 2T16. And then we can draw a cross section to show the reinforcement. At the bottom here, I have three bars of T25 bottom. And in the top, we use T, uh, 2T16 as top reinforcement as hangers. So we designed at the first span, last span, and the middle span. What is the remaining? It is we need to design now at the support T and at support C. At, they are the same, so we design only one type that will cover both of the supports. Okay. So reinforcement for support B and support C here, this one and this point, this point, the moment is 547.3. And again, because here the tension is up, so the flange is under tension, so it will be neglected, and this section will be designed as rectangular section. Again, this is a rectangular section. So for rectangular sections, there is no something, there is no flange width because it's a rectangular section. We can go directly and calculate the K equals M ultimate divided by FCU BD square. In this case, this B here is the B web, which is the 300, not B flange as we did in the previous two sections. So we calculated this now, it is 0.161. It is greater than 0.156, which means this is doubly reinforced section. If this value is greater than the 0.156, it means the section cannot resist the force with only tension steel. We have to add compression steel. So this will be a doubly reinforced section. For doubly reinforced section, we can calculate AS dash or ASC, the compression steel, using this equation here from the code. It will give you a small area, 65 millimeter squared. And for AST, it will be equal to AS compression, AS dash plus coming from this equation here. You can review this from the precious standards. There are two equations there. And it will give you the area steel of the bottom steel. So you have area of the top steel, area of the bottom steel. You need to change this to a uh, number of bars and diameter. So for the top steel here, okay. At this section, the mean steel, it will be 60.25. AS provided is greater than AS required, it is fine. For the bottom steel, even it is very small value, but we can use the two bars, extended bars that we used from AB. When we designed AB, we had four bars. We make two extended and two shorter, so we can use just two bars, or just can keep this one, just neglect this one, because by default, the bottom steel here, we'll use the bottom steel that we uh, designed when we use designed AB or BC or CD. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the top reinforcement. 6T25. This six bars, we can divide them into three and three, and it will be, we will put them into two layers because you cannot put them in only one layer because the spacing will be less than 25 millimeter. For the bottom steel here, you can use two bars that from the bottom steel that we designed earlier in. Uh, section uh, span AB or span CD. Okay. Now we design the uh, reinforce for the reinforcement, reinforcement, and now we need to design for shear. Okay. For shear here, as you see, we have different values of shear. So we can check first for the maximum shear to see if the cross section that we have, the cross section of the beam is satisfying the code requirements or not. So we can take the maximum value first, and from this maximum value, we get the maximum shear stress, and we compare it to the V small max according to the code. So the maximum you can find is here at the left of uh, support B or at the right of support C. They are the same two values here and here. This is the maximum value. So at the face of the support, we can get the value at the face of the support equals the reaction or the shear, the shear that we have it here, minus W ultimate times half of the width of the column, which is 0.15 in this case. This 0.15 is 0.3 divided by two. So this is the maximum shear force. To get the shear stress, just divide by B web times D, or with B web in the shear. So it will give us 3.1 Newton per millimeter squared. It's a little bit high, but still less than the maximum V ultimate, which is the minimum of 0.80 square root of 30 or five is the governing here by 0.8 square root of 30 it is 4.28 newton per millimeter square so this value is less than the the ultimate means the dimensions are okay it means you don't need to increase 
the dimensions of the beam. Okay, if you face the case that the V here is greater than V ultimate, you cannot continue your solution unless you increase the dimension. You have to increase the dimension of the beam. You increase the width, you increase the total height of the beam until you satisfy that the shear at the face of the support is less than the V ultimate. Here in this example, it is satisfied, so it is fine. Okay, dimensions are okay. So we can now start calculating for the design. Now here, you have maximum shear close to the support. Between at the middle part of the beams, we can use nominal lengths. We can use nominal lengths. So because this will be repeated in all the spans, we can start calculating the nominal lengths now. Assume that we'll use the nominal length will be diameter of 10 millimeter. So the ASV will be 157, which is two times area of one bar, one 10 millimeter diameter bar. So this is the ASV, area of the shear reinforcement with two legs. So from table 3.7, okay, which is this table, minimum lengths we can be calculated from this equation here. ASV, we substitute, this is 157. 0.4 BV SV divided by 0.9 FYV. So the only unknown here will be the SV. So from this equation here, we can calculate the SV for the nominal length. It will be 310 millimeters. So in this case, we can use it R10 is based at 300 millimeters center to center for nominal length. So for now, we know that the nominal length that we will use it at this, these middle parts, at the middle span, middle of the spans, will be R10 spaced at 300 millimeter for nominal length. At the supports, we expect that we will have more lengths, more diameter or less spacing because we have higher shear stresses. Let's go through this and do it together. But just to conclude this, dimensions are fine. And the nominal length that we are going to use, it's R10 spaced at 300 millimeter center to center. Now let's start designing for shear close to the support, okay? We are going to start by spans AB and span uh, CD because they are the same because of symmetric. And here for span AB, we'll start first with the left support, okay? Support A and support B because later on we have support B also, okay? Here in this example, we'll go through all of them, all of the shear values, but in if you are facing this in an exam or uh, you have a limited time, so in this case, you will be asked to check at only one point or one the shear at one support uh, just to save your time. But in this uh, video here, I'm going to show for different points because it will be like helpful for you to understand how to design for shear very well. So we start by the first value here. The maximum shear at support A and support B is 447.8 kilonewton. So no need again to check now for the maximum shear at the face of the support because we already checked it for the maximum shear at B. So everything else will be safe. Now we can go directly to calculate the shear at distance D from the face of the support and check if it is greater than VC plus 0.4 or not and so on. Let's see this together. So shear at distance D from the face of the support A equals what? equals the shear force here minus W ultimate times distance, which is half of the column, column width, 0.15, because the column in this case was 0 0.3, 300 by 300, plus D, and the D in this problem was 0.615. So the V capital at distance D from the face of support A equals 200, not at face, at a distance D from the face, yes, equals 295.8 kilonewton. This is a shear force. Now we, get, we need to get it as a shear stress, so we need to divide it by B times D, okay? So divide this by B times D, and don't forget to multiply by 1,000 to make it Newton instead of kilonewton. Here, kilonewton to change it to Newton, we multiply by 1,000. So it will be 1.6 Newton per millimeter square. Now we need to compare this one to see if we need minimum lengths or we need to design for lengths, okay? So as the support, to, to know this, we need to find VC, the shear carried by the concrete, to compare this one with VC plus 0.4, if it is greater or if it is less. So to do that, we need to get the VC, which is the shear carried by the concrete. To do this, we need to know about the area of the steel reinforcement. We need to apply it into the equation of VC. Okay, for the equation of VC, we need to find the area steel. So 
we assumed here in this section that we have two bars long and two bars short. Short. So at this section, at a distance d from the face of the support, you will have a section here and you will have only two bars. Okay. So the area still here that we will use it in the equation of VC will be only for two bars, which is one nine six, one nine six zero divided by two. It is nine hundred eighty millimeter square. So 100 AS over BD, it will be this value. This value shouldn't be taken greater than three. Now it is fine, it is less than three. It's okay, take it as it is. If it is greater than three, take it as three. Then from table three, nine, let's see if this opening was us. Yes, this is table 3.9. Here, this is the equations that we'll use it to get the VC. Okay, the VC will get from this equation and we multiply by FCU divided by 25 to power one over three. This is the first term, 100 AS over BV times D. The second term is 400 over D. Shouldn't be taken less than one. So let's apply this here. This is the equation. So once we did this, the VC we found this is 0.55 Newton per millimeter square. Okay, so we need to add 0.4 to VC. So VC plus 0.4 equals 0.95. This is the shear stress. 0.95 carried by the nominal length. The minimum length will carry this shear stress. So we can find, see here that the VD is greater than VC plus 0.4. So it means the nominal length will not be able to carry this high shear stress. So we need to design for links. Okay, so we'll use links more than the minimum length. So to do this, we use equation. Okay, VC is greater than VC plus 0.4. So we need to design for Shear, we'll use equation here. Okay, we are now in this case, V is greater than VC plus 0.4. So we are going to use this equation ASV is greater than or equal BV is V times V minus VC divided by 0.95 FYV. Everything is given except the SV. So we assume a diameter and we get the ASV. Then once we have the ASV, the only unknown in this equation will be the spacing between the legs. So you assume the diameter and you get the spacing. Let's see what we did. In this example, we assume also the same diameter 10 millimeter with two legs. So the ASCV is 157. Apply into equation in table 3.7, you get the spacing. The spacing in this case required the spacing is 118 millimeter. Okay, we can round it to be in the safe side. We make it less. So the spacing here will be 100 millimeter. So use R10 spaced at 100 millimeter so at this section here at this section here we are going to use r10 is based at 100 millimeter later on we'll see how many links we can use okay and uh, after we go with different values so once we finished at support a we are going to repeat the same situation here for support p which is the maximum shear force okay so at the left of support p at the right of support a the shear as a support uh, as a center equals this value so if we want to get the shear at a distance d from the face of the support so again it will be the shear force shear minus 1.99 w ultimate times distance 0 0.15 plus 0 0.615 d plus b of the column divided by two so it will give us this value again repeat what we did in the previous uh, part at support a we repeat it here at support b we get the V small d, again, it is greater than the previous case, 2.41. At this support here, we have six bars, okay, here, because the area steel in the equation of VC is the steel for the tension reinforcement, okay? So here, at this support here, the tension steel is six bar. If you take it here at a distance D, you're still cutting the six bar. So at the interior support, when you have a shear at the interior support, take the area of steel as it is. Don't cut anything from this area because at the support, you are still, you still have the whole area of the steel reinforcement. So calculate 100 AS over BD, it is 1.6. Substitute this into equation of VC. You can see that here the VC is 0.79 Newton per millimeter square. Get VC plus 0.4 is 1.19. Again, the shear stress, is greater than VC plus 0.4. So we need again to design for reinforcement. We are going to use the design equation from table 3.7. So here in this case, because the shear stress is somehow big, so we are going to use diameter of 
12 millimeter length. So the ASV in this case equal to 2 to 3. This 2 to 3 equals 2 times 113, which is the area of 1 12 millimeter diameter bar. Substitute this into the equation in table 3, 7, as we did in the previous slide. So we can find here the spacing is 110. We say, let's say, okay, just to be in the safe side, 100. And in this case, we used R12 spaced at 100. So at this support here, at the left of support B, at the right of support A, we used R12 spaced at 100. At support A and support D, we used R10 spaced at 100. So once you, we design for span AB and span CD, you know the reinforcement here and here. Now we can, for this span and this span, the first and the last span, we can know now how many uh, links we need to, uh, to use for close to the support at, at the middle part. Let's see how to do this together. Number of links for span AB and span CD. This is the maximum shear at A and maximum shear at the left of B and the same for span CD. How to get the number of links? This is easy. First of all, we have to get the capacity of nominal lengths plus concrete, okay? The capacity of concrete plus nominal lengths equals V capital N equals VC plus 0.4, okay? Because we design nominal lengths to resist this value, VC plus 0.4. If you multiply this by B times D, you get the shear force carried by the nominal lengths plus the concrete, okay? So, this is V capital N, it will be 1.19 VC plus 0.4 times 300 B times 615, which is the D. All of this, just to get it as kilonewton, is 1,000. So you know, at any value, when the shear force is less than 220 kilonewton, okay, let's say from somewhere here to somewhere here, okay, in this area, any value less than 220, in this area, we'll use nominal lengths, okay? Greater than that, any value greater than that, we'll use the links that we designed at support A and at support B. So if you know this value here, so using the uh, triangles, you can get what will be the distance, or you can do this easily by getting XB, okay? To get this XB, okay, equals VB, which is the shear here, minus Vn that we just calculated, Vb 597 minus Vn, okay, divided by the load, which is the ultimate load, uniform load on the beam. So once you did that, 597 minus 220 divided by 199 equals 1.9 left to the support B. So this XB, through this distance, we are going to use the, the shear reinforcement that we designed here at the left here. Okay, we repeat this for the right, the support at A. Again, XA here, again, will be VA minus VN divided by W. Okay, repeat this, we'll find that we have 1.15 meter uh, right of support A. This is right of support A, A, XA and XB. So for XA, we will use R10 spaced at 100 that we designed. For XB, we'll use R12 spaced at 100. In between them, we are going to use the minimum length. Okay. So to get the number of lengths, this is now easy. Distance covered by the nominal lengths equals the total length, which was five meters, minus 1.9, minus 1.15 equals 1.91. So this distance from here to here, it's about 1.9 meter. To get the number of lengths is easy, just divide the length by the spacing. So 1.91 divided by 0.3, because the spacing was 300 millimeters, so it will be seven. Uh, lengths. So here in this distance, we'll use seven lengths. Okay. How about lengths at support A? It will be again the distance closed at the support A divided by the spacing, which was 100 millimeter, means 1.1 meter. So it will be 15 lengths. I will use 15 lengths here. Then the number of lengths at the support B equals this distance XB, which is 1.9 divided by the spacing. Again, the spacing was 100 millimeter, 0.1 meter, so it will be 19. So in this span, we will use, at the left here, 15 R10, spaced at 100 millimeter. At this part here, we'll use 19 uh, lengths of 12 millimeter, 
is based at 100. At the middle part, we'll use seven links of uh, R10 spaced at 300 millimeter, which are the nominal links. Once you did that, the last thing to do, you have again this section here. We did not check the shear here. You can do the same, but this is just conclude the values that we are going to use. Again, 15 links at support A, 19 links near to the support B with R12 is based at 100, and nominal links, seven links, R10 is based at 300 will be in this middle part, okay? The last thing for the shear, you check at this middle support here, support BC, you have only the same value here or here, so let's check, check one of them. It will be just repetition of what we did. We have to get the shear at distance B from the face of the support, calculate shear stress. Once you calculate shear stress, you compare this with the VC. Again, BC is similar to what we did in a support B. It is because it's the same at the same position with the same area of the steer reinforcement. So again, it is greater than VC plus 0.4. Okay, we have to design if we used R12 uh, millimeter lengths and we get the spacing. So the spacing 132 millimeter. So let's use 125 millimeter. So here in this area here, right of support P, left of support C, we'll use R12 is based at 125 millimeter center to center. How to get the number of lengths? We have to get the VN, V carried by. Uh, the concrete and uh, nominal uh, links, minimum links, equals VC plus 0.4 times BD. We calculate this, 220. Once we did that, we have to know where is this 220 here, okay? Between the 220, the values are less, so we'll use nominal greater than 220 left and right. It will be, we'll use uh, the, the ones that we designed, okay? So to do this, we get XB, which will be similar to XC. They are the same here because of symmetric, equal the shear force minus shear carried by nominal length divided by the load. So it will be 1.64 meter right to B and left to C. In between, it will give you the distance that will use nominal lengths. So this distance equal five meters minus 1.64 left minus 1.64 right here. So it will be 1.72. To get the number of links, just divide these lenses by the spacing in each case. For nominal links, we divide by the spacing of 300 millimeter. It will give us six links. For uh, shear links near to support B and support PC, they are the same because of symmetric here. So we divide by 125 millimeter spacing, but we put it in meter, so it will be 14 links. So to conclude this, at the left support at XB and at XC here, we are going to use 14. Uh, length of R12 is based at 125. This is a small mistake here. I changed this one and I forgot to change it here. This is instead of 200 millimeter, we are going to change this one and we'll add a text here. This will be 125 millimeter. And again here, this will be R12 at 125 millimeter, okay? And then we have a nominal length in the middle part of six R10 is based at 300 millimeter, okay? Once we did this, we finished for the shear design. We can move to checking cracking. For checking cracking, we, as you know, the bridge standard requires two checks. The first one is to check for the spacing between bars, and also we have to check for the minimum. Uh, if we are satisfying the minimum and maximum area of steel reinforcement, let's start by the minimum and area, okay? Area of the steel provided, okay? To get this one, we have to get it from table 325. So from table 325 for flanged sections, we have to see how much is B web over B, if it is less than 0.4 or greater than or equal to 0.4, based on that, we'll get the value here of 0.18 or 0.13. So from here, we found that it is 0.3, okay? This value B web over B is 0.3, so 0.3, it is less than 0.4. So this will be the value that we are using. This is the minimum area of steel reinforcement, 0.18%. Let's go and see this one. So the minimum area will be 0.18% 
bweb times h always use bweb so it will give 356 millimeter square and as you know the maximum is four percent very high value our reinforcement it was something in between greater than the minimum and uh, less than the maximum so it means we satisfy the minimum area of steel reinforcement the remaining part it will be about the spacing the spacing it should be greater than the diameter of the bar or h aggregate plus five usually it will be 25 millimeter okay the spacing is 42 millimeter and should be less than 155 which is the maximum spacing allowed by the code so we are satisfying this it means okay for the transverse steel reinforcement about above the flange uh, above above the beam it will be 1.5 h so we should keep in mind to use a steel reinforcement of t thin space that 250 millimeter for the slab above the beam okay for anchorage lab length equal always 40 times bar diameter so keep in your mind if you have an anchorage length of 1000 okay curtailment of bars you can cut some of the bars and you can extend other bars and this will be clear when we uh, see together the drawing for the reinforcement and the anchorage usually it should be greater than 12 times high diameter from the center of the uh, beam uh, center of the column so usually it's not satisfying and in this case we have to use a bend 90 degree hook like this to satisfy this 12 times the bar diameter let's see the reinforcement here i choose the only two spans span ab and span bc because the last span was symmetric to the first span so this is a side view and you have a section showing the dimensions without any reinforcement let's start putting the reinforcement so for the first span if you still remember we have four bars okay so four bars p25 we put them in one layer but too long and too short okay then at the middle span here we have three bars three bars of uh, three t25 we can put them only like long or we can also make two long and one short that's okay for the top reinforcement the main reinforcement uh, is above the column because this is the main area of tensile stresses here okay so uh, if i still remember we use six bars t25 at the support and the same here will be six bars t25 above the second support in this area here and this length here we don't need reinforcement but uh, of course we have to use minimum reinforcement we have to use hangers uh, for shrinkage for temperature change and also to hang the links so we used here two bars and here also we used two bars uh, of 16 millimeter diameter so these are the bars here uh, the first span it was 2t25 plus 2t25 the total uh, was four here the total was three and the top here we have three plus three so the total was six hangers here and hangers here were 2T16 to T16. Then we put the shear reinforcement. Shear reinforcement at the first, close to the first support A, we use R12 spaced at uh, 100 millimeter. Close to support B, left, it was the maximum shear, it was R12 spaced at 100. However, in the right, it was R12 spaced at 125. Okay. And in between here, we use the minimum R10 spaced at 300 millimeter the last thing to do is to take some section to show a cross section with the reinforcement at different positions so this is section number one you can see we cut only in the two bars okay two bars 25 2t25 at the top i cut in the t260 2t16 okay and the links were r12 is based at 100 and then in section two we cut at the middle so at the bottom you will expect that you will see the four bars and at the top you have only two bars then at section number three here you will have six bars at the top okay six bars at the top and two bars at the bottom and then section four here you have three bars at the top 3 t25 2 plus one so they are three bars in one layer and at the top here you have uh, two t16 and we use minimum links here uh, 10 spaced at 300 millimeter thank you uh, this is the end of uh, our presentation but uh, i'm going to show you the reinforcement here with more details you don't need to do this in 
uh, your exam, but I'm going to show you here in uh, this to let you understand very well how is the reinforcement. So this is the bottom reinforcement here. I separated them just to be very clear for you. This, these are two bars and another two bars here. Which is, this is black one. Then this is the hunger that you have it. Then the top steel reinforcement here, we have three bars long and three bars shorter. And then we repeat for the second span, two long and one short. And then for the top, again, the hunger and repetition for the last span. Thank you. This is the end of uh, our uh, video uh, about design of beam. Uh, we went through three different videos, part one, part two, and part three. I hope that you enjoyed my video and I hope you are the best. Thank you and see you again in a coming video. Okay, goodbye.